Course 5, Neuromotor Function and Social Cognition. Week 5, What Teachers Can Do to Support Social Cognition. Week 5, Learning Objectives. Apply knowledge and vocabulary related to social thinking through identification of individual and class-wide strategies that use strengths and affinities to leverage challenges. Implement strategies and evaluate efficacy through the development of interventions and accommodations which incorporate knowledge of social thinking into the design of a lesson plan. And demonstrate knowledge of social thinking in the context of other constructs. Now these learning objectives are developing this week, so we'll be focusing mostly on the classroom and ideas for incorporating social cognition strategies into the classroom. And I encourage you throughout this week, and as you're listening to this mini-lecture, to think about your own practice, what it looks like in your own classroom to work on social cognition, and the way that those attention to social cognition does impact students' work within the other constructs as well. So this week we're focusing on what teachers can do to support students' social experiences in the classroom and allow them to develop and strengthen social cognition. A good starting place can be to look within the curriculum itself, as teachers can help draw attention to students' attention to the social aspects of topics of study and support them in analyzing and unpacking social components of historical events, literature, or within social studies. For example, one could imagine a history unit covering topics such as the suffrage movement and women's right to vote organized around a theme of empathy. Empathy could also be a thematic focus when studying the causes of the Civil War, World War II, or even Spanish colonialism. By thinking strategically about the particular aspects of social cognition teachers think students in your class would benefit most from addressing, teachers can make thoughtful choices regarding the specific features to highlight and to feature social and positive social understanding. Beyond the thematic and topical areas of focus, teachers can also draw attention to the social understanding that goes into identifying perspectives, describing perspectives, and synthesizing multiple perspectives on the same topic. This kind of work is called for by the instructional approaches targeting the Common Core Standards, for example, and is foundational for rigorous academic work in general. At the same time, close attention to differences in perspectives can be explicitly connected to social learning, which may be especially important for struggling students. Helping these students draw connections between the perspectives of historical figures or characters and themselves, or examining the ways perspectives are embedded in textbooks articles or the media, can raise students' awareness of the ways social interactions are driven by these perspectives, and these perspectives are held, but often unspoken among individuals. Finally, another example of a curricular opportunity to address social cognition lies in the topic of writing for an audience. As students work to meet the standards for writing that include addressing audiences, teachers can help students identify the potential opinions feelings, and perspectives of their intended audience, then identify the particular area ideas and points to raise that their audiences will find compelling. Often, drawing out the connections between the curriculum and social cognition involves very little change to the curriculum itself. The main shift is in emphasis of the curriculum and the discussions teachers have with students around the existing topics and associated learning tasks. In the next two slides, I'll present other ways teachers can address social cognition in the classroom by cultivating a supportive learning environment. The suggestions I will present here are, of course, not intended to be an exhaustive list, but rather are there to help you start to think about ways attention to social cognition could be incorporated into your own classroom or direct work with students. The ideas on this page focus on ways to support interpersonal interactions among students and establish an environment that is inclusive of social diversity and social difference. First, multi-voice discussions send both explicit and implicit messages to students regarding the value of individuals and individual perspectives in the classroom. Although many teachers already aim to make sure multiple students in the class have opportunities to participate in discussions, 
Attention to social cognition may support strategic ways of calling on students or featuring students whose ideas represent a range of perspectives. Attention to this may cause teachers to ask yourselves the following kinds of questions. Do the same students tend to dominate group discussions? Do I tend to call on students whose perspective is most similar to my own? How could I organize groups or lead discussions to make sure multiple and possibly even conflicting perspectives are included? When students experience breakdowns in social interactions, social autopsies, as described in your reading for this week, are a tool for helping to make aspects of social cognition and social challenge explicit. For students who struggle with social cognition, this kind of attention and analysis of social interaction can be particularly important. And finally, addressing conflict resolution in the classroom offers students opportunities to engage with each other to practice working on social interactions. If a specific and particular approach to conflict resolution is established in the classroom, it can be particularly helpful for those students who have more difficulty making sense of the subtleties of social interaction on their own. Having a practiced routine to fall back on when in conflicts with peers allows these students to practice social skills and develop their social strengths. This slide presents some proactive activities that cultivate a supportive and positive social environment in the classroom. Establishing an environment that makes space for students, for students with social challenges to work on areas of weakness and take social risks without fear of rejection and humiliation is really important when thinking about this construct of social cognition. So these examples are a starting place, of course, and are not considered to define or cover what it means to have a positive classroom environment. However, some ideas posted here are something like put-ups. Put-ups are ways to complement or give peers an idea of what it is that other students really appreciate about, uh, appreciate about them. In that picture of the, here I'll point to it, of the hearts on the right are examples of put-ups in the classroom. Not only does it give students an opportunity to practice pro-social behavior when creating put-ups, but it also sends the message in the classroom that, the, that there's a community of ki where kindness is important and that put-ups are something that children and students can do as a routine to show each other what they really appreciate about their peers. Another idea is including family histories in the classroom, either through the curriculum itself or as a special and additional activity. This allows students to get to know each other more deeply and can help them build a sense of connectedness within the classroom among peers. And finally, establishing routines such as selecting and presenting work for a proud wall gives students a chance to see each other's strengths, interests, and differences. The routine itself is intended to make room for individual difference and variation and allows students the chance to celebrate each other's successes and feelings of accomplishment as a group. Some, none, or all of these ideas may appeal to you for use in your own practice, so please take or leave them as you see most useful to you. As a reminder, the idea here is to encourage you to look for ways to establish and cultivate a learning environment that supports attention to social cognition and in which students with strengths and weaknesses can work together and help each other improve social skills and interactions at school. And finally for this week, you have a few assignments. Your discussion forum focuses on guided social interactions in the classroom and will encourage you to create a, a group-wide list for our course um, with ideas for ways to incorporate social work and social thinking into the curriculum. Next, you have a reading response for the reading on social skills autopsies by Rick Lavoie, so please take a look at that and create that reading response to share your thoughts on the concept of social skills autopsies. And then you'll have your lesson project part three due as well. Please make sure to get that turned in so that I can give you feedback as you move forward for the final section of that assignment, part four. I hope you have a nice couple days, and I will look forward to seeing you at our Collaborate session on Wednesday from 6 to 7. See you soon!